Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today it's into the biggest and the baddest, Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our play-by-email challenge against our friend Lodric, and Lodric has put all kinds of pressure on us. We've had to change some tactics. Uh, and we're going to go through the map here. It's been a little bit since we kind of went through and talked about all the strategy and what's going on. Um, it is now January 2nd, 1942, so I thought it was a good time to do that. It is the brand new year of 1942, and let's first of all go to the intelligence reports and see what's happening just kind of overall in the game. Now, as you can see, Lodric is about is running about 1.4, 1.3, 1 1.4 times as many sorties as we are today. That's one thing that you'll notice when you play a human player as opposed to the AI, is human players use their air much more effectively, I think, uh, whether it be bombing in China or using their the Keto Butai to move around and, and really wreck things. Uh, and so as you can see, he's run about 93,000 sorties total. We've run about 59,000. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's running a lot of air and, uh, for good reason. Air to air losses. We took 33 today. He took two. Now a big part of that, of course, is we're kind of, uh, I don't know, sacrificing is the right word, but a lot of those planes in the Dutch East Indies were just trying to get in a hit here or there. Uh, those are lost, uh, causes anyway. You're not going to get those planes out. So you may as well go for it and see what happens. Uh, because of that, we're taking a lot of losses uh, in the air. For the campaign, you see 267 to 112. Destroyed on the field, 0-0. Zero zero. Uh, destroyed by Flak, 1-1. One one. Okay, for the campaign, he's got 50. We've got 11. Of course, he's running a lot of bombing missions up over urban areas, and so he should have quite a bit more. Operational losses, he took 10. We took 7. Uh, except for the one turn where we took quite a few operational losses early on with a bunch of damaged aircraft. Uh, this has been very you know, manageable, it's fine. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, political points, 735. We've got a lot, and we're going to spend a lot this time, and that's another reason that I wanted to uh, record this one and kind of go around the map and decide what we're going to do. You can see the points here, 6183, as Lodric keeps uh, building, building, building points. We're staying about the same, 10,600 now. We are going to lose Singapore and Manila in the not-too-distant future. Uh, the, those will be nice point hauls for Lodric. Uh, let's look at the scoring. Uh, we control 542 bases. He controls 294. That will continue to grow. Uh, allied air points lost. We've lost 500. He's lost 274 points. Uh, army losses. This is the big one. He is just ravaging us in China. And we actually, uh, in this last turn, as I pointed out in the combat resolution, losing Nanyang is huge. And we're going to have to figure out in China exactly how we're going to react to that. Because now he's got supply cut off to Changchow and Luoyang. Uh, I hate to take them out of a fort, uh, a ma you know, two massive forts, uh, and also because they're more exposed when they're on the move. So we're just uh, we're going to have to look at this really closely. Allied ships sunk 237. It's a massive number, 1729. So we're averaging about eight points a ship uh, because we really haven't lost anything big yet per se we lost some of those armed merchant cruisers uh which i hate to lose because there's uh, you know they're just worth a lot of points they don't necessarily do a whole lot and so to the extent you could not lose those don't we don't want to lose anything but we're not losing big capital ships or at least we haven't yet uh japanese we're showing two and 20 i think it's probably a little higher than that but we do have some fog of war Let's look at the uh, ship sunk this last turn. Well, we can just look overall. Let's look at the big ships we've lost. We lost the Maryland, Nevada, and Indianapolis. That was all at Pearl Harbor. Uh, and so, you know, to be expected, I guess you're going to lose a couple of battleships usually, if not more. Uh, we really kind of took lighter losses at Pearl Harbor than you will sometimes, but he more than made up for that at Manila. Now, the ones that I would be upset with here, you're just going to lose some ships. But the ones I'd be upset with uh, are the AOs. We have now lost 
six AOs that are worth, you know, 19 points and up. Uh, those, you know, this one at Manila, you're not, that's nothing you can do about that. That happened on turn one. These two near Pearl Harbor, uh, again, you know, you're going to lose some things in and around Pearl Harbor, but the other ones I'm, I don't like, and these AMCs, all were 27 points, all Australian and out here, you know, trying to get to Moresby or Merak or places like that, uh, just go hide these. Uh, you know, that's that's just 81 points we shouldn't have lost, and that was my fault. Uh, we've lost some, you know, other things here and there. Uh, some of it, or a lot of it, actually are Dutch, uh, which, you know, ultimately uh, aren't going to help you a whole lot anyway. So, um you know, let's look at this last turn because, you know, I, I've changed tactics, obviously, and we'll talk more about that as we go through this entire map. But uh, this time we lost the Sea Raven, a submarine, U.S. Navy submarine. Now, that was originally hit uh, at Manila. And so it was limping back home, or at least trying to. They couldn't contain the flood damage, and it eventually went down. But we really kind of lost this ship a long time ago, this submarine, I should say. And uh, so, okay, I mean, you know, it went down. We lost a lot of subs early on. I've gotten a lot of that back to Pearl Harbor. We're going to reorganize them into wolf packs. And, uh, you know, they're not very effective right now, the U.S. subs, certainly. And so, you know... We'll see what we do with them. We just may run uh, some basic ASW or sub on sub kind of stuff in and around Pearl Harbor for a while anyway. And then we lost a bunch of, you know, small ships, two, 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 one, one. So those you're just going to lose from time to time. It's not a big deal. You've got a lot of them. Uh, but, you know, it all adds up over time. I'm trying to make it zero ships lost each time, but uh, that's not always going to happen. Now, he did come in on Christmas Island and blow some stuff up. So he's got a task force down there. Pretty bold, I would say, early on. Now, he may be trying to draw us out uh, because he's got some carriers laying in wait here or there, uh, but we'll get into all of this. Um, okay, we'll go back here. Let's look at our group reinforcement schedule. Uh, the reason I want to do that is just so we can get an idea of what kind of planes are coming in in the near future and where and where. So we've got a full group of P-40E Warhawks coming into Eastern U.S. Uh, a, if we look, they're attached to two fighter command. Two fighter command is not restricted to the United States. Uh, you don't even have to buy them out. Two fighter command is made to go out into the Pacific, and we've actually already got a lot of these ship, or uh, I'm sorry, a lot of these two uh, U.S. fighter command that are sitting right now. I can't believe, I can't remember if they're at Seattle or San Francisco. Uh, they're at Seattle, so they're in Seattle. Uh, when we get the rest of these, we're going to ship them all out, out into the Pacific. We need to get air cover in a lot of different places, including Australia, uh, New Zealand, potentially Suva, Nomaya, Pago. So we'll get those railed over to Seattle with the rest of their group. Uh, as you can see, the Brits are going to get some planes, some Hudson 2As. And if we look at the Hudson, it's a medium level bomber. It can you know, it can help a little bit uh, with uh, what we're really dealing with now. We don't need this for ground bombing, obviously. We're, we're not really in that kind of position. What we really need these to do is help us uh, in the air war over the seas. So, you know, you put them on the coast and help out there. Uh, as we look down here, we get uh, Warhawks in Brisbane, and this will be huge. So in eight days, we get... 25 in Brisbane and in 10 days we get another 50 in Brisbane that's awesome uh, because of course we just saw him sally down the coast of Australia with no resistance for the most part because you just don't start with any planes in Australia uh, so getting these warhawks in and not having to transport them over to Australia will be huge uh, we can provide air cover over Sydney over Brisbane over maybe Townsville something like that spread them out a little bit and then we can get our ships back in there as it is now i had to evacuate all the ships because he's got his carriers coming down the coast we don't have any cap over the top of these places and so you got to get the ships the hell out of there 
which I did, and we lost very little as he came down Australia. We lost some AMCs, some local minesweepers, stuff like that. But we didn't lose anything major because I evacuated as I saw him coming down there. Uh, the Brits in, what, 11, 12 day, 11 and 12 days get a bunch of Hurricane 2As um, out here at Aden. And I've got a lot of transports, cargo, uh, air transport, heading up to Aden to pick these up and get them down to uh, Calcutta, Colombo, uh, and make sure that we've got some air cover over the top of those places because it's probably not too long before we start seeing carriers out over into the Bay of Bengal. And so, you know, this will give us some nice air cover in our major urban areas uh, in that theater. Uh, you know, we got some Blenheims coming in, Catalinas, um, and then you get the Indomitable. Uh, so your next, uh, this would be a British carrier uh, coming in. Now you can see the British carriers carry the Fulmar II, which is a fighter bomber. It has 12 of those. Where to go? Where to go? Uh, you can see. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Uh, the Albacore, a torpedo bomber. So the Brits will be getting a carrier in uh, here in about 15 days. That'll be helpful. We've only got the Hermes now, and the Hermes only has torpedo bombers on it. It doesn't even have any fighters, and so we'll get you know at least some fighter cover for this carrier. Uh, we've got the Albacore, the Torpedo. It's got 18 of those. And then the Sea Hurricane, uh, which is another fighter. So we'll have, what, 17, no, 15 fighters, 18 bombers on the Indomitable. That'll be helpful. And then you see we get even more Warhawks into Brisbane. Uh, that's excellent. We need that. We need that. We've got Banshees that can go out into the Pacific as well. Uh, but early on, you're really at the Japanese player's mercy until you get those planes into Australia. Okay, um, now then, let's look at, well, we'll look at the withdrawal schedule. Um, yeah, I mean, we get some planes here or there, some bolos out of March Field, a fortress group out of Pearl Harbor that have to be uh, removed. We've got some Aracobras in Los Angeles that will have to be removed. Uh, but, you know, that's coming up in like a month or so. Uh, nothing to worry about, you know, for the few turns anyway. Ship availability. Let's check that out, see what we got coming in. Let's do ETA. And let's turn that around. There we go. In one day, uh, we get three new British destroyers. That's excellent because they've got an awesome eight for their ASW. That'll help us, you know, try to uh, protect the carrier, the Hermes, and then the Indomitable when that comes. It'll also help us uh, with any task forces that maybe need some anti-submarine help. Um, you know, you just get a nice mixture of AKs. We've got them coming into Cape Town. We've got them coming into Abaddon and Aden. A lot of British AKs there. Uh, was, let's see, as we go down here, nothing really stands out. A uh, light cruiser, the Emerald, comes into Mombasa. Um, okay, we get the Royal Sovereign at Aden in 13 days. The Dorsetshire, you see in San Francisco, we get a new American destroyer. Uh, in Mombasa, we get another British destroyer and so on and so forth. The big one on here, I would say in 13 days is we get a lot more American subs. Now, again, they're not great uh, at the start, certainly uh, until they upgrade the torpedoes, which is a long ways away, actually. Uh, but, you know, the more the merrier, I will certainly take them. You can see in 13 days, you know, out here in Balboa, we get as many AKs damn near as what we've lost in 13 days at Balboa, Cristobal. I mean, it's just a massive group that comes over here in 13 days. And then you can see the Indomitable down here. Uh, we also get another British sub, the Truant. We've already gotten one, the Trusty, and the Trusty's heading down to Colombo. And then even more AKs. Yeah, as you can see, losing cargo ships isn't a big deal other than we're playing, you know, potentially for points. So it becomes a big deal then. That's your ship availability. Ground reinforcement schedule. Uh, we're pretty, you know, much getting something every few days on the U.S. West Coast. And for the Brits as well, you can see we get the 2nd Royal Tank Regiment. It's got a 63 assault. That comes into Aden. 
in two days. Uh, Pacific Fleet, 1st Marine Raider Battalion, 40 Assault. Uh, that comes into the eastern U.S., uh, but it's set up to Pacific Fleet. We'll rail that immediately to Los Angeles and get it out into the Pacific. Uh, we've also got quite a few Australian uh, brigades that come in uh, at Aden over the next, I don't know, month or so. Uh, you can see another one down here, 19th Australian. They're all attached to 1st Australian Corps, which is good, which means we do not have to buy them out. Okay, uh, so that's kind of the rundown of where we are. We're still in fine shape. Uh, I would say he's done a very, very good job. It's going to make for a really good game. Uh, you know, and if it does come down to points, it could end up being really close because he did a great job over December of 41 of just amassing points. Uh, and we're going to have to recover from that. We certainly can. We haven't lost anything critical. Uh, but again, you know, he, I, I would say that, you know, early on, he just did a fantastic job. Okay, let's start over by the Panama Canal. Uh, I usually either start in, at Abaddon or over here at the Panama Canal, and I just go right to left or left to right, and we're just going to go right to left. A lot of these task forces we don't have to, you know, look at. They're already on their way. Uh, but at Balboa, you can see we don't have a whole lot here. We have no ships in port. We have a base force. In Panama, on the other side at Crystal Ball, we do have one ship in port. We only have the base force here. You can see the supply and fuel is building up. That's fine. I'll let it build. Um, and eventually, when all of those new ships come in at Balboa, we'll fill them all up when we send them off into the Pacific. And we'll take them to either Pearl Harbor uh, or we could break some of them out and go to the go straight to the islands because if we go west, you know, you see here's Pearl Harbor where it would come in. We could go to Christmas with one or Palmyra. We could go, you know, down down this way. We actually need to get a little something out here to Penryn. Uh, we got Caroline, but you know, usually this would be lost by now. He hasn't attacked in there for whatever reason. Hold on. That's not what I was saying. I was thinking of Canton. Actually, it's Canton that usually he would have taken by now. Baker, I'm sure he'll be over here in the not too distant futures or future. Get the uh, Lease Islands, the Phoenix Islands out in this area. Usually the Japanese get there, you know, fairly quickly. You can see we've got task forces running down around behind what I call our Iron Curtain. Uh, or I at least hope it's an Iron Curtain. Let's hope it's not Swiss cheese. Uh, okay, let's see what ship we have in port here at Cristobal. We have a big old AO, the Guadalupe. Uh, let's go ahead and form that into a new task force. We'll make it a cargo task force. Nope, why did I do that? Done. Uh, let's actually form that into a tanker task force. There we go, all right. It's not that hard. Uh, the Guadalupe, we'll grab that. And for now, we're going to set that up on the U.S. East Coast. Now, I made a mistake early on. Again, I was a little rusty playing a, a good, aggressive human player. Uh, really, all of your AOs you should probably set up for doing this until you get offensive late in 1942 or mid to late 1942. This way it protects them. If you look, the Guadalupe is a 30-point ship. There's no reason to be running this out here unless you have massive air cover. Uh, you know, have it run with the carriers uh, to uh, fill them back up as a floating gas station but early on you can use them as tankers uh, but do that in places I mean he can't even attack up in the pipes right so uh, we'll send that up to the eastern U.S. Uh, we'll have it grab and we'll probably have it run to Cape Town honestly I've got a lot of things that are going now east U.S. to Cape Town so staying in the off map bases let's go to the eastern U.S. up here and we have got the Wilhelmina, uh, 4,800 capacity, Eastern U.S., Eastern U.S. Now, I've got it docked. I don't have it loading yet because I've got a bunch more ships coming in here. And if we look here, when I say a bunch more, I mean a bunch more. We've got a lot of stuff that's coming into the Eastern U.S. and a lot of it's getting close. So I'm going to wait with the Wilhelmina. I, I could send it by itself, but I'm just going to batch it up with a bunch of stuff 
uh, you know, like ships. I've also got APs up here to carry anything we may need. Uh, now, usually you can rail that down, but sometimes I'll take it from here if I want it to go over to, let's say, Cape Town or something like that. Um, so I've got a few of them up here, the Empire Star, the Empress Scotland. So these are all British ships, uh, and we would go eastern U.S. to Cape Town and then on. Uh, so I just want to have a few up here. Uh, I've got a lot of these. I really should have a lot of these on auto disband when they get there. Uh, well, I said that, but it uh, looks like I hadn't done that yet. So let's just have them auto disband and we'll put like ships together. You can see we had some that were two days away, some that were three, four, five. You know, I've been sending them up here. And again, we'll have the U.S. really, really stockpile uh, Cape Town and otherwise and when some of these get up to cape town um we or get over to cape town i'll say we will also have some of these then continue on to perth uh, but for now let's have them come in auto disband when we get here and we'll start building task forces as they get over here all of those now on auto disband if we look at eastern us we now no longer have any planes here i've transferred them all to the west coast uh, whether they're just training or not. Now, you don't have to do that as these fill up. Uh, you know, you can keep them back here for training purposes. And sometimes I'll take the ones that are going to withdraw in the near future and put them up here just so I don't forget about them. Uh, and then we can withdraw them out. Okay, so that's Panama Canal, Eastern U.S. Let's look and see from the Panama Canal up. I guess we'll, we'll check these out, see where they're going, what's going on. We've got two AKs. Uh, that are headed to Balboa, Steel Trader, Steel Voyager, they actually came out of Pearl Harbor, and I'm sending them up to the U.S. East Coast, uh, Steel Ranger and Admiral uh, Williams, same idea, uh, I've got them coming to Balboa to begin with, let's go ahead and just set that out, Balboa, and we'll have them auto disband when they get to Balboa. Now, one or two of these, or two of these, like let's say these two, I may keep here at Crystal Ball to start, you know, taking some of this out uh, that we're stockpiling there, but I haven't done that yet. Okay, and then we've got more headed up this way, including, oh, okay, so we've got these AKVs here. Now, these are very, very useful to load aircraft on, the AKVs. If you can look at it here, Hammond Sport, uh, these are considered air transport. You can tell by the picture here, it just looks a little different than your regular cargo. Now, AKs can carry planes. AKVs are made to carry planes, all right? So what's the difference? When you load planes onto an AK, they come off and they're quote-unquote damaged for a few turns while they get out of the boxes. So essentially they box them up and put them on the cargo ships. When you put them on AKVs, they come on full planes. And so when you get to the port where you want them to be, they immediately offload and they're ready to go. And so that's the advantage with these AKVs. I've of course got these coming to Los Angeles and I will have a destroyer come out and meet them. These are very, you know, they're 24 victory points, but they're even more valuable than that, I would argue. Uh, we've got this unit going to Palmyra. This is the White Wing. It's just a small AKL. Um, I'm just having that go directly to Palmyra, and then it will settle back at Pearl Harbor. So it started over here. It doesn't have a very big endurance. It's not something you send up to the East Coast. Instead, you know, I filled it up. And now with uh, some fuel, actually, and we're going to Palmyra with that. And then uh, we've got this AK that's actually going to Los Angeles. It's this kind of 12-speed, 10,000 endurance originally, 3,200 that I like to have go LA to Pearl Harbor. So we're going to go have it meet up with some of the uh, task forces we have up there. Um, what do we have out here? We've got a massive task force here we've got destroyers now the reason this is so hodgepodge is this is a lot that was coming out of either australia or otherwise out in the pacific and we need to get it back to los angeles to fill up it was about six different task forces at one time i've now combined them all so that they all get the benefit of destroyer protection escort protection so they're coming in to los angeles 
Uh, we'll have them auto disband when they get there so that we see them all in the port. Uh, we can just individually pick them out and decide what we want those task forces to look like. So that's getting close to Los Angeles. It's come a long ways. Uh, if we look over here, I think we've got uh, another. Now this one's already put together, right? We've got, this is just a big cargo task force. Uh, I've got two destroyers and a destroyer minesweeper with it. Uh, the destroyer minesweeper also has anti-sub capability, so you get a little bit of double dip there. You get the mine, you know, if he did lay mines somewhere outside of Los Angeles or around San Diego, uh, these ships will come in, uh, the DMS could hopefully get the mines, or do ASW, and you know, you can't do much more than three, you just don't have enough destroyers, uh, but we're protecting these cargo um, task force is very strongly now, I think. Uh, okay, this is going to be the Yorktown that's actually heading out to Pearl Harbor. Uh, we've got the Yorktown. I've got the planes all set up, and you may, you know, if you're kind of new to the game or you're just starting out, what do you do, you know, with your planes here? Now, once they're out at sea here, I've got them on straight-up escort. You can see their average experience is already 67. Anything over 65, I kind of just quit training them at that point. I mean, they're ready to go. Uh, as you can see, I want to add some new pilots. We'll have to get in at uh, Pearl Harbor. Now, that'll bring our average experience down. Uh, but it will, you know, lessen their fatigue. I've got them on a 50 cap. They're at 20,000 feet because these uh, F4, F3 Wildcats uh, are good all the way up to 20,000 feet, as you can see here. I probably, you know, if they were going into battle, I may have them down at 15. Uh, but for now, I fly them as high as we can. It's an advantage in air-to-air -air combat. Uh, maximum range, 7. Let's actually back that off to a six so we're not taking any operational losses um, or fewer let's put it that way you know if you ever wonder well how far should i put the range out well it just depends you know i mean if you need them to go out seven that's their kind of max range uh, but you may you have a greater chance of taking operational losses when they're going a little further out uh, i like to have them at normal range if we can now the reason i did have these at seven is if you look here at our dauntless dive bombers which i have flying at six thousand feet their maximum range is seven so if we were escorting them out we would want to go to the max range because this is their normal radius right so the fighters to cover them all the way seven out now they could go eight out to the red line but not going to do that uh, these guys are probably not going to get in a scrap, but I'm actually going to back this off to a six. Um, okay, and then we have the VB-5 group here, the Dauntless Dive Bombers again. Uh, as you can see, their experience is a 64. I've got them on a general search, 6,007 out. Let's just do it as six for now. Uh, right, and then finally we have the Devastators, which are the Torpedo Bombers. We again... I've got those on naval attack. Usually I'll put uh, the Dauntlesses on naval search and the Devastators on naval attack. Dev Devastators operate a little closer in, five and four there. I've got them on their max range. Let's actually back that off since you know they're probably not going to do anything for a while. Uh, but do if they do get up in the air, I don't want to take an operational loss. Uh, let's go back. Let's make the max react two. Uh, we could, you know, bump that up further. But if we do see something out here, we may as well go after it. This is going to be the biggest thing out here. Um, <coughs> now, unless we run into Japanese carriers, uh, we're not expecting that before Pearl Harbor. But I guess crazier things have happened. Um, hopefully, we would get some kind of warning that that's the case. Now, sometimes you may be tempted. You could just leave the Yorktown and San Diego as well. I like to have all four of my carriers together just so they're all protecting each other. Um, that's just how I do it. All right, we already talked about this group, I believe, and then we have this group that's also coming into Los Angeles. As you can see, this is a massive tanker group. I've got three destroyers and a destroyer minesweeper with it for escort, just in case he has any sub activity out here. Uh, I am going to have them auto disband, and then we'll see what we have at LA when they come in and maybe put this all back together. I, you know, we'll check it out. I've got uh, submarines running just basic anti sub out here. I've got this destroyer group. This is the one that's going to meet uh, the aircraft. Uh, this So this is Task Force, I believe this is what it's going to meet. This is Task Force 326. Uh, this destroyer is set up to meet. 
Uh, oh, I had him go into Balboa. I see. Okay, let's not do that, actually. Um, let's have his home port be Los Angeles. Now, if there, I just can't remember off the top of my head if I have to wait for him to pop out here to meet it. I don't think so. But let's see. Uh, 326. That's you. Yeah, he'll meet 326. Yeah, you can't do it. When they're in the penalty, it'll allow you. It, may, it looks like it's going to happen, uh, but it actually doesn't happen. So let's go back. Let's have this uh, remain on sta whoops remain on station and he's just going to sit here and wait when that pops out we'll just merge him in there very quickly uh, because it does come out of the penalty box like right here uh, I've got another uh, this is a PC actually the Kimball it's just running basic anti-sub in and around San Diego I've got another submarine out here I've got other PCs PGs they're just running in close anti-submarine work now they're only twos so they're not you know, the best anti-sub that you've got. Uh, but there's something. There's something. Um, now, one thing he did have out here, and we saw, we lost a bunch of ships near Christmas Island last time. Uh, he's got a fairly large task force out here. So we'll just keep that in mind as the Yorktown proceeds here. Uh, we could always, you know, bundle up some of our other carriers and go out here and meet him. And I guess if he wants to send his carrier fleet over here this, this early, uh, we can go ahead and scrap with him a little bit because it's not the Keto Butai. We know where that is. Uh, he's got a big carrier task force near the Dutch East Indies. He's also got one uh, off the coast of Australia. It looks like he split that one. Uh, I think part of it's uh, near Suva and the other part's right off the coast of Australia. So he doesn't have his, you know, he doesn't have a major number of carriers over here anywhere near Pearl Harbor. Uh, but we got to keep, you know, we got to keep watch on that. It's going to move pretty fast. It'll be halfway, you know, it'll be like out here after the next time. And we're doing two day turns, right? So let's, let's see, he can go this far and then like, let's say this far and then here. He'll be here after the end of next turn. Um, so he'll be, you know, more than halfway to Pearl Harbor. Okay, let's look at San Diego. Let's see. Uh, good morning, San Diego. What's going on out here? We've got the U.S. Uh, Air Fleet West out here. They're all restricted. Now, we could take some of these out. We've also got carrier-capable aircraft. Um, they're capable. They're not trained yet. And this may be one reason you want to keep the Yorktown back here. You can take the trained ones off and put these trained ones on. Um, or uh, put the capable ones on and then train them. Uh, and so that's one way to go about it. I mean, if we look back at the Yorktown. All right, let's look at the Yorktown. Let's look at the fighters, uh, those F4Fs here. Uh, as you can see, trained and capable stationed on the Yorktown. Um, I'm tempted to almost turn this back. I'd kind of forgotten that we get that air group in. And then, because if you look at this air group with the fighters, it's uh, carrier capable. They're not trained. And so, uh, you know, you, we don't need the Yorktown out there yet. I'm actually going to turn this around. Uh, I know that was a waste of, of a few turns, uh, but ultimately may as well do the right thing. Let's put that back in San Diego. Let's load that on and take the other ones off and let's train those because we will need another squadron of pilots that's trained uh, in case, you know, we do get in a carrier battle here or there. So I'm just going to turn the Yorktown around. Uh, it'll be just for a little bit. You know, we'll take a month or so and do that. So let's get them back here. And uh, I may take the destroyers and do something else with them. Uh, they can actually, you know, go out at least one time to Pearl Harbor and back. So we'll put that back in. Uh, my bad, my bad. That's ah, okay. Um, we're training. I've got them training for sweep, but if they're going to be on a carrier eventually, let's train them on escort. Is that true? No, nope. let's have some trained for sweep. We actually need that. So let's train for sweep. Uh, 10,000 feet, that's, that's fine. We could go up to 15, but 10, if you're going to sweep, probably come in at 10. Uh, we've got these other fighters, carrier capable. It's more of these. So we're going to load these all on to the Yorktown and we're going to train these up. These I do have on escort. Okay. Now I'm saying it. 
how it works. Uh, this actually needs to train a little lower as well, because if they're escorting out, they want to be with the bombers. Now, the bombers, you're probably going to run anywhere from five to 10,000 feet, so actually they could even be a little bit lower. Uh, again, we've got another carrier-capable group uh, that we can put on and get them carrier-trained, and I think that's why I've kind of rethought this idea. We've got a lot of carrier stuff here. I've got them on uh, these are dive bombers, so I've got them on naval attack, uh, 100 on the training, altitude 7,000, that's probably fine. Again, another carrier capable, uh, 7,000. So, th I mean, these are really nice planes, uh, good pilots. You know, eventually, you just got to get them trained up. And so we're going to turn the Yorktown around, take everything on it off, uh, maybe sail it around a little bit right out here and let these guys train up. Transports. Uh, we're training for transport. Uh, these will come in handy eventually. And then we have the Texans out here. Again, they're training. We don't really have any cap over the top of San Diego, but that's okay. We have a lot at Los Angeles and March Field, and it does cover over San Diego. So here's the Texans. Uh, only two aircraft here. I've got five pilots in here trying to train them. Uh, they're training for escort. Sure. I mean, you know, these are nothing but training aircraft. You're not going to send Texans out to do anything. Uh, ASW patrol. I've got that uh, with the Catalinas. I've got them doing ASW 50. They're down at 3,000 feet. Very low, just trying to spot anything they can. Only four of these planes. Uh, we've got 12 of these bad boys, and I can actually scoot this around a little bit. Uh, this arc looks fine, but it doesn't need to be all the way to 300, I don't think. Let's make that 290. Okay, that's better. Now we're just covering uh, the, the ocean there. All right, and what are they doing? ASW again. I got them at 3,000 feet. I've got them out at their very maximum range. That's a great ASW cover, uh, you know, to the extent planes aren't really that great at it. Uh, but it's better than nothing. And then we've got some Kingfishers running search. I could actually start that at 200. Let's do that. Uh, and that way, yeah, now it's a little more centered up. Uh, you know, if he sneaks down the coast here, we're going to have coast watchers see it anyway. And then we've got float planes here. The Kingfisher float plane, again, kind of the same search. This is 18 planes, so we're getting double coverage here. I've got them in a six. That all looks good. That's fine. Uh, I could actually probably kick this to 200, get this a little more centered up. Yeah, probably not going to sneak through here. Gosh, I hope not. Uh, but this lets us know, is anything on the way, anything trying to get in here? Uh, and we got that. Okay, let's see what we've got for land forces. Now, almost all of these are restricted. We've got enough political points that we can buy stuff out. So, you know, take the 2nd Marine Regiment. It's West Coast restricted, but you can buy it. Uh, it's 318 points. That's not bad, and we may think about doing that this turn. Well, maybe not this turn. We actually need to get some transports down to San Diego. But this is a really strong, you know, force 55, but it's, it's got a lot of stuff that could build here and eventually be something quite a bit more than that. Um, it's a full Marine regiment. I mean, that's what you want out in the Pacific anyway. So you see the AV is 55. Uh, we may think about pulling that out. The Marine Tank Battalion. Let's see, that could also be bought out. That's only 167 points to change. These are two units that will almost certainly pull off the U.S. West Coast when I get transports in here to San Diego. We'll send them out into the Pacific. Hell, we maybe even will eventually send them over to Australia or up in that area. Let's say, you know, somewhere over there. Uh, but those are two units I think we would definitely want to buy out. Uh, because they're fairly cheap for what they give you. We've also got uh, the Marine Corps uh, Parachute Battalion. This is more of an offensive force, of course, but you can buy it out. Uh, 55, now that might be something we wait till a little bit later when we need some parachute drops, uh, some airborne drops. Uh, but for right now, there's not a whole lot more to do with that until we get transports over here. Speaking of which, uh, let's go to Los Angeles. And what all do we have in LA? Well, we've got a lot of stuff. Um, and what I'm really going to focus on here is the fighters. Uh, we need more and more fighters. Now you can see we've got some of the US forward Air Central Pacific. That's just because 
Um, San Diego is pretty well full. Total aircraft 170 that we have here. Um, we've got fourth USAAF, fourth bomber, and fourth fighter uh, that are pretty much all sitting here. The USAAF, these are going to be recon aircraft. Fighter kind of goes, you know, it defines itself uh, as well as the bombers. Now I've got most of fourth US bomber up at uh, San Francisco. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and transfer this because I just like to keep them all together. So in my mind, it's all straight. And San Francisco has a massive amount of air support. Uh, so we'll put that up in San Francisco. All right. Uh, we're training at 100%. I don't think we want... Oh, these are fighters. That's why I had them down here. But they're with U.S. Uh, with the Bomber Command uh, because they're really made to be escorts, right? Pure escorts. Uh, and so we've got a lot of guys training for that. All right. So that's back up in San Francisco. Let's continue down and look at what we've got. Oh, gosh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go to the air, back to the air. Uh, we, so we've got bolos out here. Okay, I mean, they're not really worth buying out. Uh, we've got lightnings here. They're re completely restricted to the U.S., and that's what we'll see with a lot of this stuff. Now, the Aracobras uh, are actually going to be the ones that are removed. We saw that on the removal schedule uh, by January 31st. So these will be out of here. I mean, they're true training aircraft. I've got their altitude at 10,000. They're training escort. I probably could take some of these and start training sweep uh, on a few of them, and maybe we'll do that. This is training escort with 18. Uh, let's actually switch them over to sweep uh, just so we have some more fighters that are getting sweep uh, 10 thousand zero 100 that's what you want to see and as we continue down the list here these are see they're all being removed so you know even if we could buy them out and we can't um, it wouldn't really matter because we don't want to waste transports, you know, trying to get them out of here. And you see all the ones grayed out. Those are ones that we can't buy out. Um, training escort. Uh, let's actually make these guys sweep so that we've got half of them or so going sweep. Uh, Lancers. Okay, I've got them training to the escort. Uh, 20,000 feet. Sure, let's just actually bump that down to 15. Uh, zero range. Always make sure you got zero range when you're training. Train 100. Okay, that all looks good. 17 of those. Those could not be bought out as well. As you can see, almost all, none of this can be bought out. Uh, Lancers training escort. That's fine. Uh, we'll bump that down to 10,000 since it's doing escort. I had these Lancer. Whoops. And then here's the uh, squad leader uh, training cool training escort that's fine 10,000 feet then we have the recon craft here we've got them all on training and you can look you can see here training 100 and that's what you want to see when you see a 40 that means you haven't set it up yet uh, it comes onto the map at a 40 now what are these air wests well we've got uh, training naval search here for the catalinas makes sense you know they've got a big big range uh, these guys are at a 49 with their experience these pilots now these can immediately uh, go out because these are actually air central pacific uh, that's not fleet air west those are the ones that are restricted and i've got most of that in san diego uh, but these guys could go out to pearl harbor or otherwise immediately uh, but we want to train them up a little bit more uh, and so our air looks fine. All of these guys are restricted. They're all training. We've got two that could come off immediately off the West Coast if we wanted. Uh, and then we've got some Air West that we could buy out, these Kingfishers, uh, if we wanted to do that. All right, uh, what do we have in port? Well, as you can see, we've got uh, a big cargo task force that came in here. It is fully loaded. So... Um, we have loaded this up. We've got two destroyers, a destroyer minesweeper. And what all do we have on here? Well, we have a, an entire group of planes. These are all different squadrons here, or flight wings, I guess you would call them. Uh, and you see their uh, squadron leader here, HQS. Usually that's going to have four planes. The other ones have, you know, 16 or 17 usually. But let's go look at these planes. Now there's, this is one whole group, the 22nd BG you see here. Here is 51st PG. That's a different one. Let's go and look at what that is. These are Warhawks. 
uh, P-40 Warhawk fighters, uh, excellent. These guys have very little experience, but we need to get fighters out here, so I'm just taking them. Uh, and you can see this task force is headed for Auckland. Uh, so we're going to put them into Auckland first, and then we're going to determine where we want them to go. You can see these are all regular AK cargo ships, so these will uh, were all disassembled. They'll be reassembled wherever we put them on. Let's go look at the 22nd BG and see what those are. Those are Marauders, medium-level bombers. And so you saw the fighters that are coming into Brisbane. I'm going to put a lot of these Marauders over into Australia with them. So to the extent um you know we we get uh, attacked again by the keto butai or anything else coming down the coast we can at least put up some kind of resistance but they're originally going to come around the edge uh you know i've got waypoints out here you can see waypoints we're going to go to auckland originally see what it looks like out there maybe send out some of the australian big capital ships to help them out and come into port uh, and then we'll land them uh in australia somewhere we could also take this a initially to Suva or to Pago, but we'll make, it's got a long ways to go. So this is all loaded up. It's ready to go. Um, it's loaded the troops. You can see it can't quite get there, uh, but we'll, I've got it refueling, I believe in Auckland. Well, when it gets to Auckland, it'll refuel either way. So I've got that one out. We've got a lot of planes coming out. We've got AMC here. We've got another group of transports here, the Ringatiki and the Ringatata. I just like to say that. Uh, ring a titi, ring a ta ta. Oh, no, tiki, tiki. Okay, well, close enough. Um, all right, well, what do we have here for ground troops? We'll come back to the ships in port because we're going to put something together here. Now, you can see everything that is already set up to come off the West Coast, I've got in strap mode. So they're ready to go. We've got artillery, uh, we've got AA, we've got artillery. And we've got engineers and we got a headquarter group, first US amphibious, which is something we can take when we buy things out like these marine regiments down here, we can put them in first amphibious uh, US because uh, that's a US Marines um, command unit. So. You know, it's a matter of what do we want to get off here? We also have the 41st Infantry Division. That'd be fun to buy out. And it is available to buy out 1,682 points. So we're probably not going to do that. Uh, well, we couldn't do it even if we wanted to. But let's look at something smaller, like the 185th Infantry. Okay, this could be bought out, U.S. Army. Uh, it's attached to the West Coast. It could go into three U.S. Corps. Um that's restricted though. We'd probably put it uh, in Pacific or South Pacific under that command. It would cost 606 points. So we could do it, uh, but I don't think we will. Uh, it's a That's a big, I don't want to use up all of our dang points. I want to take the Marines out first. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to take these cargo ships. Now, you know, let's look at their capacity, 26 and 2,600 troop 2,000, okay, and let's look at this, they're probably identical, 26 and 2,000, okay, now let's look back at San Diego, and let's see how much this costs, now you can see the cargo load cost is a, a massive uh, for the tank battalion, okay, uh, where's the Marine? That's the second Marine regiment. That's low, you know, troop load, but it's also got quite a bit of cargo. So we're going to have to grab a couple of cargo ships at least. Uh, I don't believe we have any cargo ships in San Diego, right? No, we don't. Okay. So we're going to have to grab, uh, some cargo ships and put them in here. So that leads us to what's in here. We've got, uh, tankers, We've got some APs, we've got the Queen Elizabeth that can take a lot, but you really want that to take a big uh, division, 
a really, you know, well, maybe not a division, but one of the bigger regiments or something like that. We really don't have a lot of cargo here. Now you can see we've got a few destroyers that are ready to go. They came in with these tankers and then broke up. We could send the Crescent City and the Maui, but that seems like kind of a waste because really we'd rather, you need a transport ship with each counter unit that you move, right? Uh, but these units that we're going to move are mainly all cargo. And so it doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense to send transports, which are more valuable ships, when we can send cargo. And so I think what we're going to do, where is that big cargo task force? That's not it. That's the big tanker task force. This is also, I mean, it's got a lot of different things in it. This is the big cargo task force, right? All these AKs. Let's look at the supply situation. Okay, San Diego's got enough supply. It could send out a big mass of supply. So let's bring this into San Diego, actually. And we'll just set it to home port at San Diego. We can change that later. Uh, let's have it auto disband. Okay, we've already got that set up. And then let's have these cargo ships go over here to San Diego, or cargo transport ships go over here to San Diego, I should say. And we'll have them take those two marine uh, units out. We'll buy those out here in a couple turns uh, when the transports get there. Now, we do have those things here at... Um, Los Angeles that could move be moved out, but they're like AA and artillery. I'm not saying that's not important, but it's not as important as getting really good troops out here as quickly as we can. Okay, so uh, with Los Angeles, we did have those tanker groups. Now we've got a big tanker group coming in, but let's put this tanker group together. Tanker, all right, and we'll get all of these. These are all like ships. They're five tankers. Uh, we're going to put a destroyer. A dis Whoops, didn't mean to do that. You go back there. Yep, go back in that, my friend. Uh, we're going to get a couple of these destroyers to go with the tanker. And then we have a destroyer mine sweep uh, that's ready to go as well. And we'll put that in. That's how I like to do it. Uh, done. And... Uh, we'll dock it, and we'll load fuel, and we'll get this out to Pearl Harbor. All right, and we're just running these big task forces now. Uh, so it'll go out there. We'll have it on do not refuel. It's not needed. And off he goes. As a matter of fact, we could bring him in really with the carrier um, if we wanted to keep the carrier going this way to Yorktown. But I'm going to have that come back in. Uh, I think it's best to train these guys up, take a month or two, train them up. We're not doing anything with our carriers. I think three carriers and all of the air assets that we have at Pearl Harbor are sufficient for now. So I'm just going to bring him back in. Uh, okay, what else is going on at LA that we could send out? Not a whole lot. We've got an AKE that we... Uh, this is one of those that we modified to become an AKE. We've got our mind tender here. We also have these APs. Now these, uh, you know, the Queen Elizabeth, we're not going to send anywhere, but these two APs actually could take those. And we still have a destroyer here too. As a matter of fact, why don't we put the destroyer in here with this, the Drayton. All right, and we'll have that go there. Uh, I want to make sure I didn't take the Destroyer Minesweeper off this. No, I didn't. Okay, so it was a straight DM. DD with the APs, and then we'll need that because we're, I mean, those are high-value counters that we'll be moving out uh, from San Diego. So we want at least a Destroyer. But as this other stuff comes in, we'll send another Destroyer and probably a Destroyer Minesweeper along with it. We've also got the ones from the Carrier that we may send out with it as well. Um, okay. Back to Los Angeles. Uh, so we do have these other, like the Crescent City and the Maui. Let's go ahead and make those transports. Done. We'll grab the Crescent City. Done. All right. And we'll dock it. And we'll load troops. Okay. So what are these scheduled for? Well, as you can see, we have a couple of Southwest Pacifics. Uh, the engineers. Now, I had this scheduled for Brisbane, this artillery, 
That's kind of interesting. Uh, we've also got this engineer group. So artillery and engineers. Okay, well, let's go back. Let's add that other kind of more low value transport, the Maui. Let's put that in there. Let's, it's a 19 and a 17, I like that. Let's load troops and let's take the two uh, South Pacific ones. Let's load those, let's verify. All right, and then let's accept the load and we'll get that out into the Southwest Pacific. We may actually send it with these guys once that loads. So I'm not gonna give it any orders right now. We'll let that load up over the next couple of turns. Then they'll probably go with these transports out into the Southwest Pacific and we'll kind of determine where we want them to be as we get them out there. Uh, I think that was it really. We've got the Queen Elizabeth there, uh, but that'll be for buying out a much larger force like that massive force at San Diego or one of the ones we have here at Los Angeles. Let's look at this one more time. Uh, we may eventually take this 185th Infantry Regiment. Does that cost 606? We may that might be what we take out, but we're going to spend the points on the Marines first. Uh, March Field. Okay. Uh, this is just training. I mean, that's everything. Training 100%. Now you can see none of these can be bought out. Uh, so they truly are training forces. We can sort them by experience. We're getting some pilots up into the 60s now. Uh, some of these other ones, as you can see, the Bolo pilots really need a lot of work. Uh, but we've got those training up. Nothing really else to do at March Field. I had a little overflow that I sent to Bakersfield. At Bakersfield, we've got Bolos and Hudsons. It's fourth U.S. bomber. I just took them out of San Francisco. I put them in Bakersfield. Uh, we've got one group here that needs to get up to 100. Training airfield attack with the Bolo. Now, nah, let's do ground attack. Uh, with this, we'll set that down at, let's say, 5,000 feet, and we'll take the maximum range off. Okay, so now they're all training at 100. That all looks good, and we'll continue up the coast. Uh, we've, got a <laughs> we've got a lot here at San Luis Obispo. Um, it's restricted west coast. You know, we can't buy that one out, but the rest of it we could buy out, especially this 160th Regiment. This may be something we want to send out. That again, these regiments are about 600 points. Uh, it's just sitting here training, I guess, ostensibly. These others we could also send out. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna, we don't need three artillery at San Luis Obispo. I think that kind of goes without saying. And this is locked with 115, that one infantry battalion. This is not locked. We're going to send that to Los Angeles. All right, and I'll just keep it San Luis Obispo. It's not going to stay at Los Angeles, and when I look at this, I'll know, oh, this came from somewhere else, so I probably meant to send it out. Um, all right, so that's in Strat. It's going to go to L.A., and then the we can move two of these artillery regiments out, I believe. Uh, let's do a strategic move. I usually move troops out of L.A. just so I know where they are. Sometimes San Francisco, but let's put that down there. All right, and then we'll do the second one as well. Sure, this one's fine. We'll move that to LA. Okay, and so those eventually will be ready to send out. We also have these engineers. They don't really need to be here. Um, yeah, but they're static. That's what I thought. I was like, why haven't I moved these engineers yet? Well, that's why. They're static. We don't have anything else at these other bases. As we move up the coast to Fort Ord, uh, we've got a lot of stuff. You can see here we have a command to U.S. Corps. How much uh, you can't buy that one out. Okay, these are just that's just a training headquarters. Uh, we've got the engineers at Fort Ord. That's static. This other stuff, 35th Infantry, massive. That's a full division. You can't buy it out. 164th Infantry Regiment, you can buy out. And so we will strategically move that down to Los Angeles as that's a, yet another regiment that will eventually buy out and move out into the Pacific. Okay, and then we've got yet another one. How much does this one cost? 392, that's a lot more affordable. Uh, we'll strategic move these guys again down to Los Angeles. So we've got them all together and we'll try to get all of our transports coming into LA. So we've got them all congregated and we'll get those off the coast here eventually. Um, 
Okay, so that's four doored. We have two uh, planes running search. This one's kind of heading up here towards San Francisco. It doesn't have much, you can see, it doesn't have much of a radius. As a matter of fact, this really makes more sense in San, or San Francisco. Did I say San Diego? I meant San Francisco. Uh, let's transfer them to San Francisco. And then let's change this to 180 to 70. Yeah, that makes more sense, okay? I mean, they don't have much range, and if this is what we're looking to protect anyway or uh, look out over. But this does have a lot of range, and that's just fine. That's nice and dandy, a naval search there. We also have naval search coming out from Alameda. It's the only thing at Alameda, as you can see. We don't have any other planes up here. Uh, we do have a task force here, which is just a YP. I've just got it running this very basic patrol zone uh, looking for anything. It's an ASW force. Uh, we've got some patrol gunships that are doing the same thing. The Jackson, uh, these are two YPs. They're running ASW in and around San Francisco. Uh, then we have a lot of bombers at San Francisco. If I get on the planes, there we go. Uh, so we've got all of these training. Now we can buy out these bolos. You can see them lit up. We could also buy out these bolos. They have the same group, 41st, 42nd. Nope, they're not. Uh, but here's 41st and 42nd down here. So we could buy out these Marauders. We could buy out these Bolos. Do these Marauders go away? They do not. So those are all things to think about that we could get off the coast for air power. Uh, these are almost all 4th U.S. Bomber. I've got them all set up at training, uh, even some big B-17s. Now, a lot of times I'll move the B-17s back here. You're not going to need those for quite some time. Uh, so I'll put them back at a, you know, a place where we don't, you know, they're not in the way, I guess you would say. But ultimately, San Francisco has a massive, massive amount of aviation sport. And so it just it doesn't kind of matter. It's just how you keep it straight in your mind. Uh, we've got six ships in port. We'll come back and look at that because I want to see what else we have here. Pacific Fleet, uh, this is in strat mode. It's ready to go. We can get it out into the Pacific We've got engineers. Now these are all, uh, you know, we can buy these out. Uh, so we've got, you know, an infantry, another one of these infantry regiments. This one's I'm, I'm leaving in San Francisco, but it's another regiment that we could buy out. Uh, what is What are these guys attached to? Just the West Coast U.S. Okay, so we can kind of assign them to whatever we want. 57th Coastal Artillery, that's Pacific Fleet, AA. Uh, and then this is static, right? It says we can buy. I don't know why they allow you to, you know, quote unquote, buy these out. They're static. They ought to just be grayed out, make it a little easier. Uh, but nothing too exciting here. We really have, um, you know, this is the only quote unquote infantry. We have a lot of artillery and AA that could come off the coast. So let's see uh, what we have ship wise. We have two ACMs, uh, our mine tenders. We have some YPs here. Uh, we could just put them in an ASW group may as well. And we'll just put that uh, into a task force, and then we'll set up their patrol zone. All right, we'll just do it, I don't know. Let's uh, maybe here for one, and then boundary two will be here. All right, so they're just running ASW in tight, in tight here at San Francisco. Just don't want anything to sneak in there. At least they would warn us. and We would know not to ship, send ships out or something. Uh, we've looked at the air. There's that um, ACM. We do have a ship under repair. It's the Katrina Luckenbach that we're turning into a tender. As you can see, it's going to be an ammunition tender. That's why those Luckenbox, that's what you do. Luckin, Luckenbox, Texas. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I always promise you I won't sing, but sometimes the music is in me. Uh, we've got submarines doing their thing. Uh, what do we have up here? Uh, at Ogden, well, we've got a lot of training going on. These are all B-17 fortresses. They're all 5th U.S. bomber. Now, these could actually be bought out, or uh, they don't need to, I'm sorry, they don't need to be bought out. They could go immediately out into the Pacific. So maybe it would make more sense to have these at San Francisco and the other ones back, but I'm not going to spend my time doing that now. It's not a huge deal. 
Uh, they should have plenty of aviation support, I believe. Yeah, 118 back here at Ogden, and maybe in one of the upcoming turns, I'll move all of the B-17s back here. Uh, I, for some reason, I know it doesn't really matter, but for some reason it makes more sense to have them flying out over the desert, uh, doing their bombing training for with big B-17s. Having them fly right into San Francisco seems a little odd to me. Uh, but, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't think our little pixel people in San Francisco are going to be that upset. Uh, they're like, the noise pollution here is incredible. Uh, Eureka! Okay, we're in Eureka. This is totally fixed. And I just like to have a unit. Now, this has got a nice assault strength. What I like to do is have these mo motorized units at these bases. So you don't give them a free landing and they can react. So let's just say the Japanese landed here. We could take that motorized unit and get up here very, very quickly. And so I've got motorized. There's another one of those motorized units. Corvallis does not have anything. It's not on the coast, so not a big deal there. Uh, Tillamook, uh, great cheese, by the way. These guys are just, you know, they've got lactose like crazy going on in Tillamook. Uh, they also have another one of these motorized units that's fixed to the West Coast. Uh, yeah, we didn't have anything else in Corvallis. Uh, Astoria, we do have an infantry division out here. It could be a decent landing spot if he ever wanted to attack the U.S. West Coast. So we've got a pretty decent, uh, you know, infantry unit. But we could also take some things out of Tacoma. Tacoma is not an easy place to land. And if you look, we've actually got quite a bit at Tacoma. Uh, maybe that's something to think about. We could put this infantry regiment there it is totally fixed to the u.s west coast the artillery is not um this actually i'm going to strap move to seattle so if they're not tied down you may as well get them to your big shipping out points um and make sure if you needed them for something you can get them off of here we also have fort lewis engineers but those are static so this was the only one that can really move off the coast uh, here at Tacoma. We may move that out to Astoria or something, but, you know, I, I'm not too worried about an invasion at Astoria, at least right now. Uh, if we get to that point, we got a lot of things to think about, to say the least. Uh, we've got, uh, what do we have here? ASWs. It's an AM. It's really a minesweeper. We've also got a huge tanker task force. I say huge. It's three tankers, but they got massive capacity coming back into Vancouver with the KVs and destroyers. And then we've got an a, a little AKL coming down the coast. Now, I don't see any reason for that to happen. We may as well put it into Seattle and have it go up to Alaska. We're actually a little light on supply in Alaska. It's something I wanted to look at as we go through here. Okay, uh, so that's what we had out here. What is this? This is going to Alaska. It's got a KV with it. It's an AK, the Mount McKinley. It's going into Anchorage because right now, for whatever reason, Anchorage does not have a lot of supply. It will build up over time. Of course, you get a lot of fuel up in Alaska eventually. Uh, but right now, anyway, I just wanted to get some supply up there. I sent them with the KV in case we run into a sub. We've got some KVs that are British, right? Uh, but they're, you know, up here in Canada uh, at the start. And we'll just send that KV with it. As a matter of fact, I may just have this go back to Seattle and we'll just dedicate this, the Mount McKinley. It makes sense that it's going to Alaska. We'll just have that come back to Seattle, load up again, and off you go. So nothing else to do here. Uh, as we look at Seattle, we've got a huge naval search going on with these PAs. Um, this is U.S. Forward Air Sen. So this could uh, go out to Pearl Harbor. That's really where it's meant to go. Uh, but we're running it here now just to get a naval search, see what's out here, make sure nothing's sneaking up on us. We've got a lot of fighters here, and these fighters are in two U.S. Uh, these Aracobras, they are not the Aracobras that are being withdrawn. Now, I finally got these up to a 50 average experience. I didn't want to send them out. Uh, before we did, but you can see two U.S. Fighter Command, and I had mentioned when we talked about the aircraft coming in that two U.S. Fighter Command is uh, not restricted, and its um, its main um, headquarters is here, two U.S. Fighter Command. All of this can get off the coast, and we really need to get it off the coast. Now, is there one group that's not... 
Okay, we're doing search to US file. Okay, these are all part of the same group. As you can see here, 31st PG, we need to get them on cargo ships. So the next cargo ships that come into Seattle, uh, we will load up aircraft and get those out to the Pacific as well. Uh, this is just a little uh, minesweeper, I think. No, it's PG, PC, PG. Uh, what do we have here at Victoria? We have a bunch of K or several KVs. Let's put it that way. Uh, these are again running ASW in and around here. And then we have two PCs patrol craft. that are just patrolling this straight right here between Seattle, and Vancouver. Let's go to Seattle. See what we have here. What else can we take off the coast? We've got uh, another one of these infantry battalions that can eventually get out there. Uh, and an artillery regiment. We've got engineers that can go out. Uh, as you can see, the ones that are Pacific Fleet, North Pacific, it's an AA and an artillery. I've got those ready to go already. And then we have the two U.S. Fighter Command. I've also got that in Strat, so it's ready to go. And then we need to load up the planes. Well, let's see what we've actually got here. Uh, ships under repair. The Colorado has now almost repaired two days until it's out. And you can see we already got the war spite. Excellent. And we've got an AVD, an aircraft tender, that we'll send along with those aircraft when we send out, send those out. ACMs, we've got the Abadis and the Bastion uh, that are sitting here doing our mines. We don't really have a lot of cargo that's coming in here. we got to find more cargo ships. Uh, let's see, where is the best place to get them? Well, we got to really wait until some of this comes back in. But we need to make a priority of getting some cargo ships up to Seattle. Uh, other than that, there's not a whole lot to do. We're going to save the AVD. Uh, these stay here, of course, the ACMs, the mine tender, the war, spit, war spite, and the Colorado. I'll probably just leave here for a little while. Uh, you want to be careful with those because you get Japanese sub activity here and it can become a real problem. All right, we've got the AM running ASW. We've got a minesweeper. We've got a destroyer over here. Why don't we take this destroyer? For some reason, I've got it in Vancouver. What ships? We, okay, these are just the AMCs. I'm hiding these. The Prince Henry and the Prince Robert uh, don't really need them along with us. Let's send this destroyer to Seattle, and we'll put that along with the aircraft when we get it out of here, or when we get them out of here, I should say. Um, so we're going to want one of these cargo task forces to come into Seattle. That's a lot of planes to load up. Uh, okay, up into Canada. Uh, we've got a float plane out here at Coal Harbor uh, that's just running back this way to see anything that may be coming. So that's a naval uh, search that may be coming in this way. We've also got an infantry uh, group out here. It's the Scottish Battalion. Uh, their morale is terrible. 34, we could just put them on rest, put them on rest training. Uh, and some of these others I should go back actually and put on rest, rest training. I don't know why I forgot to do that. But really, it's the ones that have bad uh, morale. And for whatever reason in this game, uh, the Scottish, the British, the Irish over here, uh, any of those regiments and battalions have really low uh, morale. And I think that's to dissuade you from buying them out and sending them out in the Pacific, which isn't very historic. Okay, so we're going to send that U.S. destroyer over to Seattle. I did that all right. Yep, I sure did. We'll just have that auto disband when it gets over there. So we've got it in the port and can put it all back together. Uh, in Vancouver, nothing else until that big tanker task force gets back here. Uh, Coal Harbor we talked about. I've just got a base force in Bella Bella. I do have naval search going on uh, out here at Alliford Bay. As you can see, we have supply in here, no fuel. Remember, planes run off supply. You know, if you're kind of new to the game, that seems odd, uh, but planes run off supply, not fuel. It's only ships that run off fuel. Uh, nothing else to do up here in Canada. Oh, Canada. Uh, what is up here? Just a base force. Okay. Uh, fine. Nothing else to do there. Let's go out to Alliford Bay again and see what we have here. AKL unloading out of Seattle at Yucatan. Of, oh, I, I know what I did. We have enough supply here at Alford Bay, so I'm going to have this continue up to Yucatat and give it the rest of the supply out of here. So I canceled the unload. I thought I did. 
There we go. Okay, now that's on canceled and now it'll move up to Yucatat. I'm glad I came back and saw that. Um, you know, base forces, you have Prince Rupert here, which actually is pretty strong uh, as far as getting a lot of fuel eventually. It's only got 4326 now. We have an AM up here. We have a local minesweeper and it looks like we have another AM here. We may as well put him in with this guy. Uh, we'll just have both of those running. There we go. They're running their patrol zone just out and around here. Just making sure, I guess I could have them run all the way around the island, right? So let's set up our patrol zone. There's boundary one. Let's set boundary two here. And I'll just kind of run around the corner. There we go. And now, now that whole island, we're just looking for it. Oh, I guess I need to set a three. Let's set a three. Okay, and we'll just have it come back into Prince Rupert, maybe get a little more fuel, and back out you go, and just round and around we go. Um, okay, nothing else really to do here. We have some torpedo bombers that are sitting out here. Okay, we're doing, uh, I've got them on ASW patrol. Actually, I think I just want them on naval search, 250 to 290. Okay, 5,000. Okay, yeah, they're just going right out over this, you know, to make sure he's not sneaking in something this way. It could go this way, but let's just do it this way for now. We've got a real supply problem at Annette Island. So I'm actually going to take this that I had set for Yucatat, and we'll just have it drop off at Annette Island instead. Uh, that should be enough supply to get him through, you know, months and months. So let's do that. Uh, what else? Okay, I think I'm going to call this an episode. Uh, I am going to continue on with this to the extent you, you want to see what's going on in the rest of the map. I'm setting this up anyway. And so I'm going to make this, you know, I, I forget, we're on episode 15 maybe. So I'm going to make this 15.2. And when I come back, we'll do 15.3, 15.4, so on. Uh, anyway, uh, so if you want to see a certain section of the map, you can check it out. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.